Excellency Secretary General of ISA, Mr. Michael Lodge, ladies and gentlemen. As many before have said, oceans are the frontier for us to learn about, understand and cherish in this century. So I'm honoured to share with you some thoughts at this high-level webinar organised by ISA. I welcome the much-needed draft action plan in support of the UN Decade for Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. As the UN High Representative for the LDCs, LLDCs and SIDS, one of my functions is to champion partnerships. And this um, does include uh, the area of marine uh, scientific uh, cooperation. After all, the surfaces of oceans on our shared planet exceed that of land masses, and we have a way to go in understanding much better these precious resources. We all know that oceans, in their climate role, with their resources are key to achieving the SDGs, and especially so in the most vulnerable 91 countries of our planet. So I very much value the continued and ever-strengthening partnerships with ISA. Just in June this year, uh, we convened an ambassadorial briefing for the LDCs, LLDCs and SIDS missions here in New York. The PRs of Malawi, Kazakhstan and Belize, speaking on behalf of the three groups, urged us all to strengthen national and regional capabilities in marine science and technology. This century, in spite of all its many challenges, is a century of ever more advanced and sophisticated technologies, but not everybody has equal access to or sharing in some of these truly frontier-breaking technologies. This is why it is now that we must focus on capacity development to enable these countries to participate in and benefit from marine scientific advances. We cannot leave them out, we cannot leave them behind. We must ensure they can access and work with these new and exciting technologies for the eff effective management of the oceans and its resources. At present, too often, the LDCs, LLDCs and SIDS lack the expertise, the institutional capacities and the financial resources to participate in and benefit from ocean research and development to ensure they can manage their ocean resources in sustainable ways. These are considerable challenges given the complexities and also both acquisition and maintenance costs of the new and emerging industries linked to marine scientific research. Just think of deep sea mining, especially given the high cost and advanced technologies associated with such activities. To date, some 30 contracts for exploration have been signed with ISA. That is good, but none of them are held by LDCs or LDCs. It is now that we must invest in the transfer of marine technology, make sorely needed financing available and bridge this unacceptable gap inter alia through training of personnel, strengthening research capacities and building institutional capacity. I'm sure we can all agree that our goal is for the seabed exploration and exploitation to deliver sustainable benefits to all mankind and that those benefits are shared equitably. But for that to happen, we must ensure everybody can participate. To get this done, we must strengthen coordination and collaboration at the global and regional levels to increase marine science cooperation, to have better access to data and information, to deliver training and to overcome barriers to the development of institutional and individual scientific capacities. Ladies and gentlemen, oceans are our global common good. And so we all share responsibility to ensure that LDCs, LLDCs and SIDS are equal partners, are not left out and are equal stakeholders in the pursuit of scientific research and exploration of the deep seas. This also means that we must pay due attention to their national priorities and, as I've said before, their capacity development needs. One such forum to do that is through the LDC Technology Bank. Its aim is to contribute to the development of science, technology and innovation in the least developed countries. I encourage ISA to explore opportunities for collaboration with the Tech Bank. From OHR LLS perspective, we increase our support to SEEDS to foster private sector partnerships through the SEEDS Global Business Network Initiative. A focus is on fostering ocean partnerships in its current work program. However, due to COVID pandemic, the 2020 SIDS GBN Forum, which was scheduled to take place in Palau in December, has now been postponed to 2021. Once more, I wish 
to invite ISA to partner with OHRLS to further the discussion on strengthening marine scientific capacity in SIDS. In accordance with Article 148 of UNCLOS, allow me to emphasize the need to scale up support through targeted programs to address the special needs of landlocked countries. We must do all we can to assist the LLDCs to overcome the obstacles arising from their disadvantaged geographical location, remoteness and lack of access to and from the seas. Ladies and gentlemen, my key message for you is that within the framework of UNCLOS and through the International Seabed Authority, we can and we must foster greater cooperation to enhance opportunities for the most vulnerable countries. OHR LLS is here to work with you to facilitate the implementation of the ISA Action Plan. You can count on us. Thank you.